Good evening, my name is Sarah Brick and the story I will be covering is Influencers, now is not the time for a beach holiday. Recent fines introduced to those who are travelling out of the state without reasonable excuse has gained a lot of traction and was viewed as overdue by many. Due to the sheer amount of people travelling into the country from places like Lanzarote and Malaga, some of the favourite hotspots for Irish sunseekers. From the 18th of January to the 24th, over 2,000 people arrived into Irish airports from the countries mentioned. If you're a reality television fan or have been following some of the recent coverage of your favourite influencers online, chances are you have seen some of them flying off to luxury destinations in recent weeks, which has been met with serious backlash. The head of an influencer travel company has commented that he warned celebrities enjoying free holidays in Dubai not to post insensitive pictures of their trips. Keith Herman is the CEO of Trending Travel, a company which gives away free holidays to influencers in return for them showing off the destinations and packages available. There has been growing outrage within the general public over people breaking lockdown rules in general for non-essential travel, but especially over celebs flaunting their luxury holidays after Ireland and the UK have been plunged into yet again another really tough lockdown. These influencers have taken the approach to excuse their travel abroad as essential, as is a means of work. As reaction gained momentum this week, the Love Island star Anton, who has been in Dubai since the beginning of January, has posted images of himself out and about for meals and smoking shisha in a pool. He also took a video of his laptop with a view of the skyline in Dubai and behind it, and he wrote, Love my office view. Is it time these influencers and holiday goers alike check their privilege? As Olivia Atwood stated, another previous Love Island member, there is a difference between being able to earn money wherever you are and being there for your work. We're speaking with Joe, who is a Leave and Search student. Um, so Joe, where are you actually from yourself? Where are you living? Uh, Rush. Rush. Fab. And describe the end of your fifth year in school then. What happened when coronavirus hit first? Uh, when it first hit, it was just uncertainty, really. Um, I think we were all kind of hoping to get out of school because we thought it'd be a good two weeks off, three weeks off. And then we got out, whatever, and just turned into online learning. It was, it was hard at first, but then you kind of get into the groove of it. And for the first two weeks, i say it was enjoyable. Yeah, uh, just because you're out of skill. Like, I think everyone loves a day off skill. But then uh, when they got into, like, I think it was six weeks in, it just, it's just a chore. And sitting at your desk all day is paying the heart. And then sitting after there studying for nine hours of the day, like, it's it's not great. Would you prefer that it would be um, some sort of grade system or would you actually prefer to sit the exam itself? Um, I could see I could see both sides, but personally, I'd prefer... 100% to get calculated grades. There's no way, personally, I'd feel comfortable sitting a regular exam. Just the way, just the amount of time we have left to prepare it and how much we've lost. It's just, I think it's unfair. And I know why people want to, and maybe calculated grades go against them because they haven't shown their best in the last two years. But like, that's what it is. And what would be like your general day online? So we were chatting earlier and you were saying that you're kind of nine hours at your setup. So what time do you log in at? And do you feel you get a break at all then, or is it very much kind of on the laptop all day? Uh, to be fair, my school, the way we did it is, uh, so you'd have the likes of maths, English, Irish, four times a week. So four hours a week, we do hour blocks. And uh, for English, maths, Irish, and your choice subjects, you've uh, one hour off. So say I'd have about two hours not in class to do like catch up on uh, assignments, say you hand us out or do homework and uh uh, it's kind of spaced in by three classes of online classes per day and then two hours off to do whatever catch up in the days before work. And then whatever you don't get done that time, you do in the evenings for homework. So. And then do you feel like that as a year, you know, there's so much talk about six years last year. Do you feel as a year you've been a little bit forgotten about by the government? Uh, a small bit, yeah. Well, definitely last year anyway, it was kind of a lot of uncertainty of what's going to happen with our leaving to and what way they're going to change it. Because... At, at this point last year, we thought we were going to get a full year in school. So uh, when they came out with the modified uh, modified leaving there were more choice, I thought that was fair enough for most subjects, maybe not maths or history. But uh, I was happy enough with it. And then just when it comes to this now, there's no, it's kind of, it's kind of forgotten about as in sense for our mental health because they're not giving us any certainty or telling us anything that's going to happen with the exam yet. And what's it now? About four weeks in? And we've yeah. no word from the government. So. Do you feel like the kind of sense of uncertainty is kind of stressing you out even more so than the kind of study aspect? 
yeah, I wouldn't even be an anxious person normally, but just with everything going on, anxiety is through the roof. Like, yeah, I've never really experienced anything like it. Do you feel like time is of the essence? Do you feel like a decision needs to be made sooner rather than later? A hundred percent. Just the uncertainty is killing people here. Like, it gives like even if they say whatever, we're not doing a, uh, we're not doing leaving to, we're doing leaving to, like it's hard enough to g- gather motivation to study when you don't know if you're going to do it or not. Yeah. So I'm sitting here studying. I was like, what's the point in studying if I'm not going to be a little um, Do you feel like you kind of be wondering about deferring maybe next year if the online university situation continued into next year? Um, I haven't given it much thought, to be honest, but uh, I wouldn't reckon I'd defer. I just, I kind of want to get through college and get finished and get, in, get work and like, Thanks so much for chatting to us, Joe. Really appreciate it. And very best of luck. And we hope you get some clarity soon. Thousands of people have been detained across Russia at Alexei Navalny protests. Protesters across Russia have held demonstrations for the second weekend in a row in support of the well-known critic of the Kremlin, Alexei Navalny. Over 5,000 people in hundreds of cities were detained, including Moscow and St. Petersburg. Navalny was arrested at a Moscow airport in mid-January after landing from Germany where he was recovering from poisoning of August last year that he has seemingly blamed on the Kremlin. The 44-year-old anti-corruption campaigner is being detained in a Moscow detention centre and is potentially facing prosecution based on several different crimes. On Sunday, the centre of Moscow was locked down, with police lining the streets and pedestrian movement restricted. Protests in other countries have also taken place, including outside the Russian embassy in Dublin. The US Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, has condemned the, quote, harsh tactics used against protesters, with the Russian Foreign Ministry accusing the United States of, quote, gross interference using online platforms to promote these protests. Russian authorities have issued warnings and threatened potential criminal charges against protesters. The head of Russia's Human Rights Council has called the threats a quote, provocation, as they have nothing to do with protecting rights. Navalny's wife, Yulia, was detained by police on Sunday after her arrival at one of these rallies, but was released shortly. She was seen encouraging supporters to attend the rallies on Instagram with a post of a picture of her family. On Tuesday, Navalny appeared in court in Moscow, where prosecutors were sentencing him to three and a half years in prison for violating the terms of a suspended sentence for fraud in 2014 by not returning to Russia immediately after recovering from the nerve agent poisoning in August, to which he responded to that he was in a coma the entire duration of his time in Germany. He is also facing up to 10 years in prison on separate charges of embezzling from his foundation, which he denies according to the Financial Times.